Greetings, comrades. This is Sonic Kilimov. Back with another HCVR video. But before I continue, I got this sweet new intro that I made through HitFilm Express. Might not be the best intro ever, but hey, it's just something I felt like stringing together. So, roll it real quick. That was pretty good, Sergei. For something made from the ground up, that was impressive. Well, thank you, Brian. I appreciate it. I know I can do better, but you know, practice makes perfect, I guess. But anyway, <laughs> anyway, greeting again, comrades. This is Sergei Gilimov, back with another HTVR video. And I figured, uh, I mentioned before I was going to do snipers, and, uh, well, I kind of sort of am. I'm mean, showing off three different sniper rifles, but there's one thing they have in common. Well, if you look behind me, they are all 50 caliber. 50 BMG. At least I think the M2. Oh no, actually, two of them are 50 caliber. The M200 is a 408 Cheyenne. Interesting round, uh, but they. We'll get to that uh, eventually. Let's go ahead and start with the big boys first. The good old uh, Heck 8 2 and the Barrett M107A1. Now, I'm sure uh, Brian will, you know, do his job and uh, explain in good detail about these weapons more than I can. So, Brian, if you will. Thank you, Sergei. So the PGM Heck 2 is the standard heavy sniper rifle of the French Army. It is chambered in the 50 BMG cartridge. It has been in service since 1993. It is a rather heavy rifle, weighing a little over 30 pounds. The barrel is actually made by FN Herstel, and is lined with a stellite alloy which increases the barrel's longevity. The muzzle brake, bipod and rear monopod ensure maximum accuracy from this weapon. Yeah, cool thing about this gun, you know, pretty interesting design here, you notice this huge space here, well, that's where the bolt travels. Let me pull it back. So get an interesting little profile. Now naturally, with a round this big, you need a lot of stability. And, you know, that's where that comes in. The good old hover bench. So just uh, toggle the lock. And there we go. This makes using sniper rifles so much easier. You know, especially with me, because I mentioned it before, I suck with sniper rifles. Doesn't stop me from firing them, but, you know. With this, it makes it so much easier to, you know, you know, adjust the scope, line your targets, and take that perfect shot. And of course, we have these controls here. I showed them off before in one of my Black Ops 1 weapon specials, showing off the few sniper rifles I had. I know the uh, area is not straight, but whatever. Just gotta adjust it a little bit. And you notice we can spawn uh, paper targets here as well, but the thing is, the way up there, so that's assuming you're up there in the top floor. Here, we're doing it down here in the ground floor because I want to shoot some melons. I look forward to the day we get spawnable melons. I would love to get a you know light machine gun and chop them down FPS Russia style. But until that day, we'll make do with what we have. So, gotta adjust the angle a little bit so you can see with this little hover bench again much easier to use sniper rifles get a steady shot and all that stuff because again with around this big you get a lot of recoil so with this it's no problem just gotta adjust the uh... let's hit a melon uh... I guess we'll try a shot Yeah, I got one between 150 and 200 millimeter, uh, meters. <laughs> millimeters, that'd be like right in front of my face. <laughs> Speaking of, there is one right in front of my face. Let's, uh. A bit overkill doing it this close range, but, uh, you know. When an HDVR, do what the Soul 6 do. 
be terrible with sniper rifles. <laughs> of course, gotta shape for the next round and. Oh, this actually runs even closer, but whatever. Let's get one a little farther out. How about that? Just gonna move up a little bit. Again, this takes a little getting used to, especially with these controllers, but you know, it can be done. Okay, I wanna turn, I wanna point up or down. Okay. Let's see if it just. Uh, See, it's very difficult when you're trying to go way out there. Like, that's, I want to say 400 meters. So, you get to be really, really diligent with these controls in order to line up that shot. So, right now, I'm uh, about an inch to the right. Okay, a little to the left now. I think we'll try this shot here. Okay. Moment of truth. Well, I shot a melon. Looked like uh, 350 meters. I meant to shoot the one way out in the back, but uh, I guess uh, we'll see if the uh, intervention can uh, take care of it. Also known as that uh, quick scoping gun that's become a meme. In video games. Yeah, I'm sure uh, Brian could tell you a little more about this gun in detail. Indeed. The Cheetah M200 Intervention is a bolt action sniper rifle chambered in 408 Cheetah. This proprietary round is designed with accuracy in mind, balancing rotational and linear drag, keeping the projectile on point. It can be fed with five round or seven round magazines. This rifle is in use by a few countries, including the UK, Czech Republic, and even Singapore. Yeah, I can't believe all this time I thought that the intervention was 50 caliber, but no. It's his, its own proprietary round, 480 Cheyenne. I'm sure it'll still hit pretty hard. Maybe not as hard as a 50 cal, but pretty close. Alright, so let's try... Th uh, well, it's a, kind of the same as that scope. Let's try something different. Let's try one of these newer scopes here. Let's see... Yeah, it's not going to be easy getting a <laughs> long-range target with this. It's not that high of a magnification. I guess I'll do this one. Uh, you know, we'll just stick with these scopes here. I would love to know if you can adjust the uh, magnification a little more. Okay. Let's see. It says 15 times. I didn't mean to move it. I keep forgetting that in the previous update you can actually adjust the magnification of the uh, scopes. Okay, so. Oh, it goes up to 32 times magnification. Alright. I think we're able to get a better shot through here. Oh, yeah, it's a much better picture now. Just need to adjust the angle. Okay. A little more to the side. I know you can't see through the... I can see through the VR heads up, but you can't see through the screen. But, you know, I am... Uh, doing my best to adjust this thing. Okay, it's just on top of it. Let's see if we can actually hit it. Came close, I hit another melon that was in front of I'm trying to hit the melon way in the back. Again, I suck at snipering, you know. See if I can adjust the uh Okay. Maybe if I move the gun down oh I 
I somehow heard a box. It must have ricocheted. I need to aim just a little higher. Even though we're indoors, it seems to take a uh, drop off into account. After all, real bullets, they eventually drop the farther they go out. Oh, yes. <laughs> Managed to hit another melon. Almost got the one way in the back, though. I think uh, we're going to step it up a bit with the, probably the most recognizable 50 caliber sniper rifle, in my opinion, the good old M107A1. Now, it's actually an updated version of the M82, as far as I can tell, but again, Brian, with the uh, you know proper description. Well, the M107 is actually the standardized name for the Barrett M82A1. It is an anti-material rifle, though it is used by some armed forces for anti-personnel. The M107A1 here uses a muzzle brake that can accept a suppressor. This weapon was originally designed in 1980, but didn't actually see service until 2002. Yeah. It also has a uh, retractable iron sight, so if you want to be ballsy and use it without a scope, you can do that, but uh, come on. It's a sniper rifle. You gotta have a scope. Okay. Wish me luck, Brian. Oh, you don't need luck to be good with a sniper rifle. Okay. Okay, we're gonna go aim up this time. Okay, moment of truth. Safety's off. I came close. I came close. Just move down just a hair. Okay, that's a little more than a hair. Again, you need to have pretty steady hands to not only fire this effectively, but uh, adjust these controls pretty well. My hands get a little shaky sometimes. Again, came close. Okay, I think I have it this time. We got him. Nice shot. Couldn't have done it better myself. Thank you, Brian. I do my best. Well, as best as I can, you know. <laughs> but yeah, just want to do a little sniping and uh, thanks to the hell of Brian, he can do the descriptions while I do the shooting. <laughs> so yeah, hope you enjoyed the new intro as well. I might change up clips for that intro sometimes, but you know. That's why I'm not feeling lazy, but yeah, just want to do a little sniping, because I mentioned before, I suck with snipers, but uh, with this, I suck with them a little less. But, uh, you know, I still got to get used to, you know, you know, adjusting the scope, adjusting for elevation, keeping in mind range drop-off, because just like in real life, you know, a bullet, the farther it goes, it's going to drop down. So, uh... When you're aiming something way far, you, you actually have to aim high. That's what those little ticks and some of these crosshairs and scopes are for, to help you adjust for distance. But anyway, hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you look forward to the next one. Till then, Dasvadanya. Atoms fall apart. Solar flares arrive. <laughs> Buildings collapse. collapse. Only a few will survive. survive.